Okay, so first thing that we're going to do, I really want to talk about the, the One Piece trailer. Netflix just dropped the new One Piece trailer for their live action adaptation. Responses are mixed. I think it's just haters are going to hate, but like I, oh, I couldn't be more excited for this. I've already watched it like five times. We're going to watch it more. You guys can see for yourself if you haven't seen it already. <laughs> Luffy's accent feels so right. I don't know how to describe it, but it adds to the character, I think. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm i really glad that they had Inaki, the actor, like lean into his accent for two reasons. One, would have felt really awkward if he was trying to hide it. Actually, three reasons. Two, I feel like it's authentic to the time period and everything. And three, uh, I don't know if you know this, but like Oda has... Uh, released a list of the nationalities of all the Straw Hats, and he like explicitly said that Luffy is, is South American, specifically from Brazil. I'll try not to fangirl squeak too much as we go through this, but I'm so hyped. I'm gonna be king of the pirates. God, Shelltown oh, looks so good. A treacherous that sword fight ocean. right there. Mm. Okay, yeah, so, so we got some different opinions in chat. Some people saying they died from cringe. I don't know. I think that they got the tone just right between keeping it too serious and, and keeping it, like, too cartoony. I know some people's got uh, got some complaints about the dialogue. You know, there's some quips in there. But, like, I, I think they're doing something interesting by having Zoro and Nami be, like, a little more snarky about things at the start and Luffy just be, like, super positive and I feel like he's gonna pull them in over the course of the series you can't just keep it simple the way that the car you know the, the anime and the manga are because like that sort of characterization doesn't really track in live action but like things like that set up with with Zoro saying nah I don't do special attack names I guarantee he's gonna be like or I mean I not guarantee I don't know what the show's gonna do but the way that i would write that would be to have him then later come back and be like onigiri and then like smile at luffy and he smiles back and they're like yeah all right let's see what you guys thought though because you know that those are just my thoughts yeah dio zawarudo i agree like lots of people forget how corny one piece is a lot of the time the music yes hero Solly, i agree like that i really like that orchestral score a lot it's like stuck in my head already uh, feels very, you know, a little bit different from the anime, obviously, which people are going to be disappointed by. But also, like, like it's got a very strong rhythm to it. I just hear it playing in my head right now. And it, like, doesn't step on, like, Pirates of the Caribbean or anything like that. So I'm really, I'm just excited. <laughs> as long as we don't end up with Joss Whedon's snark. Yeah, it could definitely go too far in that direction. I agree. That is something I'm worried about. But also, Oda's said that he's not letting it go through until he's satisfied so i don't think he'll let it go too far in that direction yeah zoro's attack name is literally rice ball uh there's also 108 pound phoenix which is like the, the those are like cannon grades the stuff that's got me the most excited is like look at these ships right barati looks so good i know like some people are like a little not on board for the screaming mouth of going merry but i i think again strikes a good balance between looking realistic while still capturing the general vibe of the original you know you couldn't just slap a cartoon goat head on there we haven't seen a lot of uh kuro or the black cat pirates that is true i it is kind of worrying that they might skip usopp's introduction arc but like I, they've clearly cut this to like imply that Luffy gets going merry right away, but I don't think that that's actually what happens. And the reason for that is if we go to right here, there's some reasons to be a little concerned about this because, you know, stretchy arm effects have, are always awkward, but I, I think this looks about as good as it could. But anyway, the skiff or possibly schooner that they are on here is, I think, supposed to be like the first boat that he steals. And when we see this shot earlier of Alveda's ship, it's not going Mary there. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that he's going to start and then get Mary later. So we'll we'll get the Usopp chapter. You know, we've only seen... Yeah, yeah, there. Uh, that might be our long park. Looks like it could be at the top of the hill in his arc. The sense of scale is really important. We want the 
ocean to feel big, right? And I think they're doing a pretty good job with that. With I mean, you know, we haven't seen that much, but th this shot of Shelltown looks really good. You know, they got the fortress up there, but they designed it to be like more believable as a city compared to the cartoonier simplified look. The tracking feels a little awkward, like the composite there feels a bit awkward, but this is like an early shot for a teaser. Like you can sort of see where they, you know, cut it out from the background, but overall that that's like, a, I think a really solid design. Absolutely love this shot of, of Zorro on the cross. Just like nailing that. Looks Portuguese as fuck and Greek. Most of this was filmed in South Africa, I believe. Like this looks like a real city that they like took modern elements out of and composited stuff in. Nailing that about a guy on a cross. Yeah, I mean, technically they tied. The other like thing that just has me so excited again is the fact that these are real ships, right? They actually built Mary. Um, they actually like built Barati. That's, that's not like CGI behind him. That's a real set. You can tell when they're on the deck, they're actually like amongst the crew. Not, not a crew. crew. On the deck, I, I, like you know that CGI. You, you, I, again, you can sort of see the difference there. Is that is that Garp's ship? I think that's Garp's ship. Ah, oh, hype, hype. But also with you know the Navy ships being metal, I'm like picking so much stuff up. Let's like, ah, oh God, there's so many like little things to appreciate here. That looks great. The compositing's really solid. It looks like it's in the environment with them. I wish they were using puppets, but like, God damn, it shanks! It shanks! <laughs> but yeah, the way it's gonna be broken down, season one's East Blue, season two, I mean, if they're covering 100 chapters a season, then season two could conceivably go all the way through Alabasta. Then season three would be Skypea. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing skippable in One Piece. Some stuff seems like filler when you're, when you're starting out, but like, Everything comes back. 50 chapters a season. I mean, this one's going to be 100. This one's going to be almost 100 chapters because it's going all the way to Arlong Park. Yeah, the term filler has lost all meaning. Muppet Chopper is, is essential. I don't know if they'll actually do it. That's, you know, that's a pipe dream. But I would really love it if they did Muppet Chopper. But, you know, even if they don't, Lord of the Coast looks really fucking good here. Way better than I expected. We'll have to see how they handle the Fishmen. Buggy. Also, I want to talk about Buggy, because, like, this design's so good. I, I hope that's still his hair, right? If it is, I, like, that makes sense with how his hat's been cropped and stuff. The fisheye, I think, is making his hair tassels look longer than they are. But, like, the main thing is, like, they really make his nose look like a creepy-ass growth. He's got that authentic Age of Sail dentistry in his mouth. He's just like the right mix of like, he's got that charisma, but he's also creepy. It's such a great design. You know, the, the messy ass face paint too. Going a little bit Dark Knight Joker with it, I guess. But like, yeah, he just, he's just nailing the, the balance between looking like a goofball and looking creepy. Yeah, the nose is porous. So yeah, it, like it really makes you think about like, like you, you don't think about it as much in, in, you know, just watching the trailer, but like, yeah, that's a growth on his nose. Must be really <laughs> uncomfortable. Bro's about to ask why I'm being so serious. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. But like, I, you know, I don't think you can do a clown in movies without at least acknowledging some form of jonker at this point. Yeah, one thing you can't say about the production, no matter where you're at on the skeptical or not spectrum, it, it, it's got heart for sure, Whiskey Lucky. I agree. Like the, like the people behind the, everybody working on this cares so much. You can see it in the costume designs, the set designs, the actors are like do, doing such a good job of embodying their characters. Like the, also, I just want to talk about like how much like actual fight ass fight choreography there is here, right? Like that's, that, there's a real kick. That, that was an in, in shot kick that not, I mean, he didn't actually knock that hand away, but he really did that kick. He really did did that kick on screen. You, you don't, not a lot of like stunt doubling or, or shortcuts being taken here. Like, look at this. The sword fighting. That's, that's like real ass fight choreography right there. Compare that, you know, to, to 
a lot of what we saw in, in Netflix Cowboy Bebop, for example, how quick cutty shortcuts they took with, you know, all the fight scenes and everything. This is just like, it's really raw. It's really good shit. That's a really, really good sword fight right there. I'm, what character is that? Yeah, yeah, it could be one of the cat pirates, you're right. Also, look at the fucking, the tiki torches, the whole set there. It's a real, it's super dramatic. Um, the Cutlass versus Katana thing is just working. I'm not 100% on Nami's wig, to be honest. I, but like, I don't hate it. She's definitely given a good performance though. Yeah, Kabaji seems to make sense. Ha having him fight on a unicycle would be really, really, really hard for a lot of reasons. I wish they'd do it. You know, if they're, if they're gonna split that budget anyway, they really need, they gotta get the lion looking good. Wigs are also hard. That's a real ass ship. That's a real ass ship. You know, there's no fucking green screen here. We're not fucking Mandalorian nonsense, which is impressive in its own way, but like, God damn, they're actually swinging on a rope off a ship. Yeah, that's what I want to see in a pirate thing. I'm just trying to see, because we don't see much of Alvita here. I think they have the actress in a fat suit, which would make sense with what happens to her character later. Yeah, Kobe only gets like two frames here, but like, that's a really good Kobe design too. A little bigger than he was in the, the manga, obviously, but like that makes sense because they got to age him up a lot faster and it's got to feel organic. The Alvita actress is not in a fat suit, but, but she's got to slim down. That's like, that ha- Wonder what they'll do with that. Gum Gum does sound corny, but One Piece is corny. One Piece is inherently corny. I am having way too much fun. I'm way too... Maybe I'm too excited for this. I don't know. Like, I've seen so many of these things go wrong. There's no way she's not written out of the story in the first episode. No, because... I mean, maybe they will, but, you know, they've already got the actress cast, and it would be harder to rewrite Logtown, I think. You know, like, having it just be buggy... I really want to see how they do the effect of Buggy without all of his middle bits. Uh, that's going to be really fun. I mean, you know, we'll see. Good trailers have led to bad shows before. I was so skeptical of any kind of One Piece live action thing at first, right? Because, like, so much of One Piece is rooted in just being a cartoon. You know, stuff like Sanji's eyebrow and, and Usopp's nose. And, of course, you know, Luffy stretching, which... Is a little awkward here, you know? That's always gonna be awkward. But like, I think this is doing such a good job of justifying itself. Not just paying very nice homage to the manga and the anime and like being faithful to it, right? You know, this is classic One Piece shit. He's sitting in his special seat. But like also using One Piece as like a justification to make a real good swashbuckling adventure story of a type that we don't get to see in live action anymore, right? I've heard good stuff about the, the like, gay pirates right now. Our flag means death. Yeah, that one. I've heard really good stuff about that. Haven't checked it out yet. You know, I, I, I'm part of the Pirates of the Caribbean generation, and, like, we haven't had anything like that since that, and, like, this is, this is giving me the... Oh, feel part of the awkwardness in that shot. You're talking about the, this one is the camera following the fist the whole way through the entire punch. Yeah, I agree. It's, you know, they're, they're trying to like do like a bullet time thing there. It just feels like it's stretching out there a little too long and it's holding in place. It should still be like extending back. I think that would help instead of just sort of being at that length for a really long time. But you know, it's a hard effect to get right. Did you notice Luffy has multiple outfits taken from full-page full spreads of the manga? Yeah, I did. I definitely did. Like, uh... Rare overall Luffy. Gotta love that. Yeah, and, and the, uh, the, you know, the, the Hawaiian shirt Luffy here. Which also, that also makes me think that this is taking place later and that we are gonna get the black cats, right? Because, you know, this is clearly a shipyard. This is probably the shipyard where Mary is being built. Yeah, if they didn't do gum gum, everyone would complain. But if they do it like just the finishing moves in a fight, 
That's a good compromise. I think they're gonna do it more than that. It's a really big part of his fighting style. You see him doing it. That actually looks really solid, you know? It's 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 a blur effect, right? You know, like like they're not doing it. It's a quick cut, but like that looks pretty solid. God, Usopp looks so good too. Like oh, the the you know the design of his slingshot is just perfect. He's got the drip, which I feel is really appropriate. I I want to hear him speak. Yeah, they got muskets, right? Like like uh, that's a real, very Usopp expression. That's a very very Usopp expression. Um, waiting for the Ultra VFX fan edit where they give Usopp a nose. Yeah, I understand why they didn't do it. Like, that makes sense. Three sword style! Yes! <laughs> yes! But yeah, th so the kick here, right? That's a, that's a flintlock. That's it. Yeah, it's a flintlock pistol, but that's like an authentic flintlock pistol. Let's take a sec to appreciate the interior of Barati, cause like, god damn! Look at that! But also, also, that's Sanji's actor. He's doing the actual kick. He's still holding the, the plate. That's... Mm. It really feels like everybody's on the same page here. I don't know. You know, like a big problem with Netflix Bebop was so much of it was CGI, right? They didn't have practical sets for half of anything and, and they didn't really do a lot of stuff in camera the way that they could have. And you know, this is only a teaser, right? It could very much go in either direction. There's a lot, a lot wrong with Netflix Bebop. This is a bunch of cuts from the mostly finished series. Yeah, Watanabe said that he ducked out after the first scene. I, I, I did a breakdown of the first scene in my video. I could... One other reason in uh, I'm having so much faith in the adaptation is Oda. He's like Brandon Sanderson, that now a lot of companies want to adapt his books. He doesn't need the money, so he can make sure the adaptation's good. And Oda's in the same position. Uh, if he wasn't sure they would make a good enough job, there's no way in hell he'd ever agree. And he's been gassing the adaptation up. So I think it's going to be a solid 7.5 out of 8 at least. I, I agree there. Like, Oda, Oda has, like, a direct quote about this, actually. Since then, Netflix has committed enormous resources to the production. It was announced that the show will launch in 2023, but they've promised that we won't launch it until I'm satisfied. The entire cast and crew spanning various countries are brimming with love for One Piece. They're burning with passion, and I've reminded everyone involved this should be fun. We're in the final process right now of finishing all eight episodes. We'll be set in sail very soon. This isn't like tepid praise and you know Oda's not the first person to come out praising a Netflix show before it came out the creators of Death Note drew fan art uh, for the Death Note movie and were very enthused for it I kind of see why they liked it honestly um, I, I also understand why a lot of fans didn't but I kind of see why they appreciated it but Oda is so dedicated to making sure every iteration of One Piece is true to his vision, while also, you know, making sure that everybody working on it has, has their own fun. I trust him. I trust him a lot. Oda should play the old man in Orange Town. That would be great. I don't think Oda speaks good enough English to do that, but it would be great if he had some kind of cameo. Melabella. One of my worries is that given this was apparently insanely expensive to make, and let's be real, we'll only get more so with later arcs, that Netflix will not be willing to pay the cost unless this does Stranger Things numbers or higher. Yeah, I think there's a distinct possibility that this only gets one season, if it even if it is decently successful, because like doing it practically is so hard. But like I feel like Netflix actually understands One Piece has the potential to be their Game of Thrones, to be their Lord of the Rings series, but like actually they'll make it good. There is so much potential in One Piece as an ongoing series to keep people hyped, to be something that people are enthused about. And like, you know, I think they've nailed it so far. 200,000 views in two hours. Clearly there is a lot of hype around this. Ain't no way it gets more than two at most. You might be right, because Netflix, they don't support stuff enough, but like, people fucking love One Piece. And a lot of people are gonna start loving One Piece because of this, because it like gets around that, you know, I don't know about the cartoon look thing that a lot of people have hangups about, right? Oh, hey, people were complaining that, that Luffy doesn't have a scar, but there's the scar, you can see the scar, right? 
See the scar? He's got his scar. Luffy's got his scar. They got the scar right. One Piece is... It's so good, but like... A lot of people can't just can't get into One Piece because of how it looks, um, because like that creates expectations for them. You know, we can we can go into how people around the world and Americans especially are conditioned to not like things that are fun or stylized or goofy. You know, like it's got to be serious. It's got to be manly. It's got to be all this stuff. This is to me, this is exactly what I was hoping for. Right. And this, I feel, is doing a good job of capturing what makes these characters so endearing and what makes this world so interesting, you know, while bypassing that distinctly American illness where they, they just can't. They just can't. Writer's strike leads to a contract that affects streaming residuals in a way that's good for writers, but bad for streaming services. That might also impact an expensive show's future. That is true, but in, I think actually One Piece will probably be more likely to survive something like that because so much more of the budget is going to effects and the actors and like, really building up like really complex scenes and, and like shooting on location, right? They're already spending so much fucking money that like the writer's residuals are a smaller piece of the pie. Yeah, to be clear, I'm on the Writers Guild's side here. Good. Everybody should be. Worker solidarity. Just in, Jeff. The trailer we got today is about a year old, so the final product will be much better. Source, One Piece, spoilers, Twitter. That's really exciting. If these effects are like one year out pre viz if this is the stuff that they showed Oda like before he was like yeah I'm 100% happy with this then mm, this is gonna be a good ass show <laughs> I love Careful Buggy so much that. I don't work for you I just he love Buggy so much really love oh, the boy, sound effect on that stretch notes. too Everyone lends me your energy to materialize Muppet Chopper. So yeah, people who came in from the, the raid, if you don't know, I put out a video about this like a year ago and how I'm very excited and I think that this could potentially be good. But the one thing that I really want is to make Tony Tony Chopper a Muppet. Because I think that if they just did most of the critters with Muppet instead of CGI, I mean, I'm turning around on that a little after seeing the Lord of the Coast, you know, this looks really good. This looks really damn good. Like, goddamn, look at Shanks there. Danny DeVito as Chopper. Yeah, just have Danny DeVito there. That's another really good option. Just put two horns on his head. Sweet Jesus, what's their budget? I think it's the most Netflix has ever spent on a show. I am really pogging out. I'm, I'm, you know, I was hoping that this would be good, right? I was really hoping this would be good, but I wasn't expecting it to like, work on every level like this. Like the performances are so good. I, you know, I understand why people are like a little hesitant on the dialogue, but I think that first line Luffy says, you know, I've been feeling the call of the sea my whole life. Now I'm setting out on an adventure. Like that's perfect, right? I love his, you know, the contrast of his positivity again. Oh, oh, hey, just let's take a sec to appreciate Shanks here. Let's look at this Shanks. That, that sure is Shanks. I really am excited to see how they'll take this design and do the, you know, the little buggy when he's just his his hands and his little feet walking around like a little guy. I'm really excited to see how they're going to do that. They might not. I wouldn't blame them if they didn't because it's a pretty goofy thing. That's fucking Garp! Garp hype! Let's go! Yeah! <laughs> Yeah, it's only eight episodes. There's a lot to, to to get through. The long nose would just look weird, right? And he's got to be on screen a lot. Um, with Buggy, they can make him look weird because he's a villain. You're not supposed to be, like, super attached to him at first. Usopp, I think it would just throw people off. It's the same reason that they can't do... Um, they can't do Sanji's eyebrow, right? Just doesn't make sense. Um, dreads look really cool. Usopp also, like mad drip every shot that he's in. That's the gate! Holy crap! Gate of Arlong Park! Haven't seen any fishmen yet. They need to make this more colorful. I think it's the right level of colorful, honestly, right? I mean, you gotta remember everything's being graded for HDR these days, too. So it, it'll pop more there. You know, like, there's plenty of color here. I suppose Zoro could be more of a moss head, 
I think Zoro's hair looks good enough considering it looks natural. Yeah, yeah, for real. There's, there's a tough balance to strike there, I think. Let's also take a sec to just appreciate this fight choreography, because goddamn, you do not see stuff like that on television these days. They, you know, actually, like, getting the actors to do their own stunts and stuff? They don't, they, you ain't got time for that, and you ain't got money for that is the other thing. I've seen people complain about it, because, like, you know, obviously it's a little out of character for Zoro at first to not be saying the names of all of his finishing moves, but I think that that's going to be, like, a really great, like, piece of... Um, character development where like toward the end of the series he's gonna you know probably in the fight with Hachi or maybe before that maybe Mihawk actually maybe Mihawk will say his finishing move and that's gonna make Zoro turn around on it but yeah that's definitely a joke setup everyone's serious before they join Luffy's crew for real he's just infectious he makes people happy and that's that's what he's got to do. Inaki is doing such a good job in this role. I don't know if it's a Marvel line per se. It's a Hollywood line for sure. But, you know, it's a trailer. They cut this to market it to as wide an audience as possible. They're going to do what has been proven to work in other Hollywood trailers. That's just got to accept that. I don't think it looks cursed at all, Chainsaw Bees. Uh, you know, except... Set Buggy, he looks cursed, but he looks cursed in a good way. The arm stretch is a little cursed. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I don't think there's ever been a stretchy man in any kind of live action thing ever that wasn't a little cursed. Those are the lines where they make fun of the goofiness of the source material, like when they laugh at the name Otto Octavius. I mean, I mean Spider-Man laughs at the name Otto Octavius in the comics, you know, calls him Doc Ock and stuff. He, he makes fun of him. It pisses them off, so that that kind of works. But I see what you mean. But yeah, it's the same reason Disney does it with their live action remakes. They're appealing to cynical people who can't enjoy things. But I think the difference here is that Zoro's going to turn around, right? Because Luffy is the captain, and everyone will oh captain my captain for him by the end of the season. And One Piece does also make fun of its own goofiness all the time. That is true.